Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 41. Today is May 21 first and happy Thursday to you all. Please remember that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel for you to check out later. Also, please remember to be asking your questions on Menti while this call is happening so we can have our good Q&A session at the end. Let's kick it off with our first updates from the engineering department. Luca. Okay, thank you, Angie. So yesterday we released a new version of Zendi. It's 2.0.21. We already um, anticipated the matter in the previous Weekly Insider. This is a new software release with a focus on maintenance. Now, it was uh, successfully delivered with multiple contents and uh, all of them have been uh, listed. Everything is detailed in a blog post that uh, was released yesterday. And uh, so I'm looking for the link. Okay, we'll post it uh, later or maybe someone else can, can post it on, on the chat as well. But uh, please check it out if you want to know the contents of this specific uh, software release. Together with uh, the contents, uh, also uh, the detailed instructions on how to upgrade from the current Zendi version uh, to the new one are reported. So if you are a miner, a pool operator, a node operator, please proceed as soon as possible to avoid the disruption because the deprecation will happen on June the 2nd as scheduled. Meanwhile, we have also sent uh, a second notification to all our partners and exchanges. Uh, thanks, Angie and Rowan, for that. Some of them already replied that they are planning and organizing the upgrade, so everything is proceeding as scheduled. And a third notification will be sent beginning next week. Of course, we are also upgrading our applications. Meanwhile, in order to have a new release compatible with the new Zendi, the new Zendi I was just talking about. So, for example, one of them is Sphere by Horizon. A new release is planned for end of next week. And we are planning to use this opportunity to also include uh, some other content elements that we will announce soon. Uh, now, with regards to what happened yesterday, please be aware that a number of fake bots are uh, reaching out via direct messages announcing mandatory update of uh, Horizon wallets. These are scams. So the Horizon team will never start a direct message with you and will never use any bot to notify users of software updates. For what regards the new Explorer, sidechain certificate parsing is completed, which means that all the UTXOs coming from them are now included inside the database. And moreover, we are implementing all the rules to be followed to make them spendable and therefore update sidechains and the address balances. In parallel, we have completed the unit test of the core libraries and started the design of, um, of the integration tests of the whole Explorer. So we're making progress with, with the new Explorer to be used for mention and also that, that will also one day see all the existing sidechains. This was a, a panoramic about some different activities that we're bringing on, and uh, I haven't mentioned them all. In fact, we are also working on some other Zendi changes for the future, but the main focus is Horizon Sidechains Beta, which includes all the activities related to the Sidechain SDK and the main chain changes to support sidechains. Uh, we don't have Alberto here today, as he's currently busy on uh, one of those code review sessions on the main chain changes. But uh, I can report the progress. Uh, as we said last week, uh, we started the review of the new part of the main chain changes. And uh, this week we went on with it. We, did, we had a lot of progress there. Uh, several sessions uh, already, and we will continue to have them in the following days because, as Alberto was reporting last week, the current modifications in main chain are about 25,000 lines of code that have been modified, so it's huge. A few changes were requested, but uh, uh, part of them are already being addressed. Meanwhile, the code review activity continues. For what regards the sidechain SDK, changes to the bootstrapping tool and the sidechain test framework were applied in order to support what is required for a VRF during the sidechain declaration. 
and also additional changes for the proof inclusion into the certificate were also performed. At the moment, we are focused on uh, uh, the changes after uh, the internal review. The last uh, internal review was conducted and uh, the integration of code all together for further and uh, final testing. Uh, I'll finish by saying that it's nice to see that new people are discovering the project. Yesterday, we had the pleasure to provide some help to a community member that was looking into our Zendu sidechain crypto lead. And so I would encourage everybody else to do the same if you haven't done already. That would be it for now. So back to Angie. Thank you, Luca. Let's continue with Spencer for the help desk update. Happy Thursday, everyone. I posted the data from the help desk on the companion channel. Uh, a couple of brief statistics, 78.3% of the tickets were faucet related, 327 of the tickets were for other issues. The most prominent faucet issue was some downtown, downtime, I should say, of faucet due to an unscheduled downtime of a third party service. Once the service was reestablished, the faucet returned to normal operations. I want to give a shout out to Mac and infrastructure for diagnosing this quickly, allowing us on the service desk to respond with uh, timely, accurate information to the users who had filed tickets. Um, and as usual, the second most uh, issue uh, that was non false related was related to, excuse me, is false related, um, educating users on not to use VPN when uh, using the faucet. And that is the report from the service desk. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Let's continue with Gustavo for the UX updates. Hey, everyone. Happy Thursday. So regarding to the faucet, we continue working towards the community hub. We also did some uh, small updates this week. So we added a user settings page. Right now, you can only change your email and uh, change your password. But on the future, we'll integrate this with uh, avatars and uh, also link this to the forum that we are going to integrate and the achievements page. So there's a lot of work going on on the, on the faucet, which soon will be the community hub. We are also going to roll back to reCAPTCHA. We were using HCAPTCHA, but we have been having some complaints uh, from the users and we listen to our community. So we are going to roll back to, to reCAPTCHA. And uh, we also added the... Uh, you can also link your Google account now towards the social links multiplier. So you have that extra option now. And uh, we also did some uh, backend work in database normalization, but that's, I think it's out of scope for this call. And uh, we continue working uh, on HD. And yeah, I also forgot regarding the faucet, we also improved the, the brave detection. So whenever you claim now, we always identify if you're using Brave or not, and it counts towards the multiplier. Whereas before, we couldn't determine like 100% if that was the case. And it's all. Thank you, Gustavo. Let's continue with Rowan for the BD updates. Hello, everyone. Um, so hopefully, my voice is a little bit less echoey than normal. I spent a lot longer than I'll admit uh, pretending to be on the scene of Art Attack last night, putting foam all over the walls. So with a bit of luck, the echo is now gone. Um, two updates from me. Uh, if you've been paying attention to social media, you'll see that 4 p.m. EST or 8 p.m. UTC today, I'll be jumping on a, a YouTube AMA with Angela from Flipside Crypto. And our plan is to basically do, uh, holy moly, that mic. Oh, dear. I am, I am the new Lucy, I think. Uh, only my voice is much higher. So our plan is a Flipside Crypto demo. We're going to walk through the uh, new co-op that Horizon's been added to. So if you want to find out what that is, I'm not going to explain it here. Jump into that YouTube AMA and you'll find out all the information there. And then tomorrow, 1 p.m. EST or 5 p.m. UTC, I'll be jumping into an interview with Crypto Dave. So hopefully we can see a whole bunch of the community in there as well. And that's pretty much it for me at the moment. I have a couple of uh, integrations that are very close to going live, but as always, not quite ready. So we will provide more updates on that front in the coming week or so. Uh, I'll pass back to Vano if you want to jump in with any updates from your side. Hello, everyone. 
So CoinGecko, uh, which is, I think, the second most visited crypto ranking and information website, added uh, a special page for Horizons Halving, which will happen towards the end of uh, this year. And uh, I'm pasting a link for that page here in uh, our chat. And also there is a Halving tab on our Horizon uh, page at CoinGecko. And apart from that, as Roma said, we also have some new upcoming partnerships in the Eastern European region, but unfortunately we cannot um, announce them publicly yet. And that's all from me. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, guys. Let's continue with Lucy for the marketing updates. Hey, everyone. Uh, happy Thursday. And uh, Rowan, that was a very good mic. <laughs> and uh, okay, so as Luca mentioned, uh, we released the blog announcement for the Zen 2.0.21 uh, uh, release. So please download software only via links on our official website or official Horizon GitHub. Uh, we will be releasing a general uh, security guidelines today with some rules and uh, best practices everyone should follow in order to avoid uh, scams. So uh, we are also having a live demo for the Horizon on-chain activities this afternoon with Flipside Crypto. So the data scientist from Flipside Data Cooperative and then our BD di uh, director, Rowan, uh, will be there to walk everyone through uh, all the interesting data to understand these network uh, activities and behaviors um, will really help you better understand the fundamental health of a blockchain project. So if you really want to know how well the uh, uh, Horizon Network is working in, in real time, you really don't want to miss this one. So, uh, And then also there will be AMA at the end of the demo to answer all your questions. Uh, the left demo will be streamed on the Horizon YouTube channel at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, put that on your calendar, you know, make sure that you are there. It's going to be a really fun one. And then uh, beside the, uh, this live demo, Rowan also has another AMA this coming Monday. Uh, the AMA will be recorded. Hopefully, it will be shared with the community next week. We also have a Q&A blog coming out next week with our partner CoolBitX or Cool Wallets. Uh, last but definitely not the least, uh, we have our third anniversary coming up. So we are almost three years old. Uh, May 31st uh, is our third anniversary. As always, we invite our entire community to, uh, to join the celebration. Uh, last year, we hosted a um, community contest for our second anniversary, and it was a lot of fun and very well received. So we will also uh, we will do that again this year as we have welcomed so many more new users to our ecosystem. I, I really think this year will be even better. So we will announce the contact later today. So uh, stay tuned. Besides the community contest, we are also planning on doing something really special for uh, during the next weekly insider right here to celebrate the event. So uh, and of course, everyone is invited to come. Uh, we will send out the formal invites uh, on our social media. So don't go anywhere and join us. Join the general party. That's it for me. Exciting. Pass it to you, Jonathan. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. So as Gustavo mentioned, a lot of great changes with the faucet. Um, going forward, so we're still working on the ability to add uh, multi-coin to the faucet and have kind of like a rotating special coin of the of the month. So a lot of users has, have requested something along those lines, and we're definitely working towards that. A uh, quick update on games. So we're working with a company called Zombie Soup, as I mentioned before. Uh, we just had a call with them this week, and they're about 95% finished with all of the back-end work to integrate Zen into their uh, fleet of games, which is about 13 games. So now we're transitioning to work on the front end. So work is progressing really nicely, and hopefully soon... Uh, within a week, we'll have mock-ups of the front end, and within a week or two after that, uh, hopefully we'll be coded and programmed into the game and released onto the Android and iPhone stores. 
Uh, the games are free, of course, and uh, and pretty fun. Actually, I'm addicted to one of them. It's called uh, Block Jumps. So in addition to that, uh, we're, as Gustavo mentioned, uh, the recapture, we've been hearing all over the place that people don't like it. And I think with uh, with their recent really weird photos of people's faces, you know, that was kind of like the last straw for us there. Um, also, we're working on a Telegram bot. So if you go onto the faucet and click on the Telegram link, we're trying to use a machine learning algorithm to help answer questions. So if you have some free time today, head over to getzen.cash, click on the Telegram link and ask the bot some questions so that we could help it learn. Uh, lastly, we have 10 days left for the giveaway, so make sure to enter uh, before time runs out. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy and Jonathan. Let's continue with Rosario for Product and Engineering. Hi, guys. Uh, so the site, sidechain um, beta, the sidechain project is a massive, massive, massive complex project, as I've mentioned in our uh, previous calls. And it's comprised of four different sub-projects. So we have the main chain portion, the SDK, Proving Keys, and Sphere to manage the, the side chains. And software projects are, are complex and are typically divided into working pieces, milestones uh, to work through the complexity. And in, in this case, with the sidechain project, we've had to, uh, of course, we, we, we work on the individual projects that all boil into the, the, the main project. But we have to release a workable product, and that means that all four projects and all four pieces need to be at a stage that is usable for our users or new user group that we're going to be tapping into, and that's DAP developers. And in this case, it'll be for our first iteration of this uh, sidechain SDK, it'll be Java developers. So we've identified three different phases of release for this uh, sidechain project. And we'll have our sidechain beta preview, which will be our uh, first iteration that will come forward. Uh, and that's going to be a, a very minimal, uh, from a documentation standpoint, uh, and also um, f- from a functionality standpoint, it'll be fully functional and may, may have some bugs that we hope our, our users report. And uh, that will be on a testnet. And we have our second phase, which will be our sidechain beta, which will be a more refined uh, product. And that will also be on a testnet. And we'll just continue uh, adding improvements and documentation to that. And then the, the final transition will be uh, when we move those sidechain, uh, the, uh, our sidechain uh, to our mainnet, from testnet to mainnet. So with that, uh, we are... Um, as I mentioned, uh, we are uh, we've ha- identified a new user group that we will be tapping into and bringing into our our uh, community, and that is uh, DAP developers. So I'm working with engineering, uh, Rowan, Lucy, uh, and uh, Gustavo, and different individuals uh, within our team to to see what that looks like. What what's our strategy? Uh, and of course, we have HDE, which will be play a big part of that, and have Jonas that will help with that outreach, outreach as well. So, some of that early brainstorming uh, entails uh, perhaps we have when we have the sidechain uh, beta preview, we have a, um, a, a video, uh, interactive video that goes with. Uh, with the release, and we have the DAP developers join and uh, have one of our developers go through the process of building the sidechain and just have that initial interaction. And all this is in the brainstorming phase, but I just wanted to give you insight into what we're thinking. Uh, that's it for now, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. Ralph, would you like to add any comments or updates? Yeah, sure. Just wanted to talk about uh, something that I'm working on Rowan and Maurizio with. Uh, we're going to make uh, research and make recommendations on things that we can do to increase the use of Horizon now. We're already doing an awesome job with the faucet and nodes and node payments, but what do we actually are, – are there 
straightforward things that we're missing out there or things that we can do that other projects that are similar to us and using UTXOs uh, can uh, are doing right now that we, we, we can also add. So, uh, of course, the major focus that we've got is on side chains because there's going to be so many different things that we can do to increase uh, applications and user engagements uh, once we do side chains. Uh, and so we're also looking at how we can maybe – uh, accelerate different parts of that. Um, but I'm looking for assistance from the community to point out obvious things that um, might not be so obvious. So some of the use cases that we can think of right now with the way that Zendy is. So I'm not looking for things that we need to make changes to Zendy for. And, and because that's, you know, uh, Luke, Luke had talked about the next deprecation cycle being, um, uh, I think, about a half year out. So, uh, but some of the use cases are private anonymous payments to vendors, uh, international payments, so person to person, person to business. Uh, certainly, we see that there's a lot of speculative trading on exchanges. Uh, there's probably purchase and hold in anticipation of future price growth. Uh, that's that's a, a big part of what people look to do. Profiting from node operations, uh, learning to use cryptocurrency with the faucet. Uh, there are other use cases out there like time stamping and document verification. Not sure how much those are actually used out there. Uh, if anybody, uh, any project is making a, a go of it with that. Uh, and then there's entertainment like Satoshi Dice and other things like that. So and, and there might be other ideas that, that I didn't mention or that... Um, you know, that are not obvious. But so what other kinds of things do we need to make some of these use cases work more easily? And we're going to create, you know, the full report on this and uh, have it ready in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're just working through some of the ideas and discussions right now. So some of the obvious ones that, that jump out for payments are it would be great to have a Sphere wallet for iPhone and Android. Uh, it'd be great to have uh, more volume on exchanges. Trololino just point, pointed that out in the discussions. Uh, maybe additional vendor payment plugins. Uh, are there things out there that we can fork open source to our repository and modify for use uh, with Horizon? Uh, what do we need to do to make it work? Um, uh, one of the things I think that we might need to do longer term is to change the way we do transaction replay uh, protection to a more standard way of doing it. When we did our initial launch, we were really one of the first coins out there, if not the first, uh, incorporate a transaction replay protection into a Bitcoin type um, uh, software. So uh, those are the things that uh, I'm working on. If you want to reach out to me with a direct message or uh, say something in a uh, in Discord or in Telegram and tag me on it to to start the discussion, uh, looking to uh, looking that, for that from the community. Thank you. That's what I. Thank you, Rolf. And now let's welcome Rob for the final part in Q&A session. Thanks, Angie and Rolf. I, I totally agree with or love what you're doing. And guys, anyone here listening to this, if you have ideas for how the current blockchain or how Zen could be used in different ways or even just, uh, you know, simple ways that have been done on, on Bitcoin for years, we need to hear about it. Um, so this is a really important initiative. But, okay, before I go into uh, a few updates, uh, what, what I want to do is take a little bit of time to uh, go over some feedback that we got on the last Weekly Insiders video on YouTube. Um, so I, I mentioned this earlier this week to our team so that we could take some actions, but uh, what, I still want to bring it up to the community here. So, okay, the, the message was from a, a longstanding community member, um, not always vocal, but always part of the community for the last couple of years. Um, and I, I do encourage you to check out the, the YouTube video of The Lost Insider so you can see the commentary. What he said was, I have long been, I've been a long-term investor in Zen for a couple of years, and I listened to the last several weekly insiders. You guys have a great team, and I love your transparency. But I do not hear anything that is in the pipeline or anything currently in use with significant promise. Two years ago, there was a lot of promise for messaging apps, security features, hash graph. Uh, that was our DAG idea. In fact, I can't even find a wallet for my iPhone that I can send messages and hold my tokens. I cannot even find a list of projects or organizations of who is using Zen. For, and um, he was, he says, a, a huge uh, Zen fanboy for his entire circle of friends and family. But now, 
you know, he's, he was questioning that. So, um, this isn't exactly the best message to get, but on, on the other hand, or on one hand, it is an awesome message to get because it shows that we have someone who's been committed to this project for the last couple of years, at least, uh, you know, by following what we're doing, by being excited by it and evangelizing that to their, their own personal circle. That's fantastic. It's not so fantastic is that uh, this this particular person was losing interest or losing faith in what we're doing and not seeing uh, measurable achievements that were, were you know, quite frankly, promised uh, a couple of years ago. So what I'll say is, you know, just decomposing that message, uh, you know, first of all, a huge thank you for making it because taking the time to actually write this type of feedback is extremely important. And for us, it's really important to actually take it to heart, internalize it and see what we can do about it. Um, I, I certainly do appreciate the fact that people are recognizing that we have a, an extremely high quality team and we are being uh, you know, I, I think one of the leaders in the industry in terms of transparency. And to reiterate that, if you're listening to this, this Weekly Insider, this is not normal. It's not normal to have a, a team, whether it's a normal business or a crypto team, to actually open up their team calls to the public on a weekly basis. Uh, furthermore, we have our communication channels and Discord open to the public. And we have a commitment to migrating, uh, you know, all of our development to the public uh, domain. So. Uh, we haven't always done that. We've done, in particular, a lot of our development in private repositories, but in, uh, especially with beta, the sidechain beta being delivered, uh, once all of that is delivered to the public, development will continue publicly um, henceforth. So, okay, that's that's part of it. But uh, the other big message I'm seeing here is that we made a lot of promises early on that uh, we, we did not um, bring to fruition. And some of these promises were uh, technical uh, strategies that we chose um, not to pursue. And what we did, and, and mainly because we had to accept the reality that we, we are in this uh, resource-constrained environment, in particular because we've been in a bear market for the last couple of years, uh, we had to really focus and focus on what we thought was the most important, really high-impact thing that we could do and the biggest contribution that we could bring to the industry to solve a bunch of different problems. And we chose sidechains. So the Zendu implementation that we're, we're getting ready to release the beta preview for is exactly that. This is a two-year investment, um, a very sophisticated technology um, that I, I, I think will, as soon as, or very, in very short order, be recognized as one of the most significant innovations to the industry over the last few years. Uh, so extremely excited for that. But what it did was it necessitated that we had to focus. We couldn't uh, spread engineering effort across multiple areas. In particular, one one uh, area that was mentioned here was, uh, you know, the the hash graph concept, and the, this went to um, scalability. So, could we could we uh, evolve our blockchain to something like a directed acyclic graph, where we could do um, many things in parallel versus things sequentially in blocks? Uh, well, our our uh, chosen path for scalability was sidechains. So you. You could scale in many different ways, and you can scale like the early Bitcoin conversations of arguing over block size. You could do that. You could make block size dynamic instead of static. You could do things like um, you know uh, broadcast transactions in, in in kind of a this hash graph concept, or you know you could do what we we did was we built out a, a hub and spoke sidechain main chain model where you have a more stable main chain proof of work, and then you have uh, an unbounded number of sidechains that could be developed on that. And each of those sidechains is its own blockchain that you could do different things on and you could innovate in different dimensions. So all that to say, we we know that we're very sensitive to the idea that our roadmap today is different from our roadmap back then. But what, what I want to uh, reiterate is it's for a reason. We had to make certain decisions. The decisions were not easy. And last week's commentary on the the easy road versus the hard road I hope explained uh, some of the rationale behind some of these decisions, but I really do appreciate the feedback on that. Uh, with respect to an, an, an iPhone app, this for me personally, and you know, there could be some debate of whether or not the project should be doing this, but for me personally, it, it is a thorn in my side that we, we intend to rectify soon. So we were not managing Sphere by Horizon in-house up until recently. We brought it in-house and we've been spending that time burning through open issues. And we're nearly done with that. And then we will be continuing on new development for Sphere. We have 
uh, the Android mobile uh, app uh, developed, and we, we need to do the, the iOS one. And then we need to actually do a big architectural review. Uh, so we just want to be extremely transparent about where we are with Sphere. And we've been focusing on Sphere being a highly capable, basically like a mainstream wallet. So this is not the type of wallet that um, you know, uh, advanced users would necessarily want. This is not the type of wallet that, say, extremely privacy-focused users might want. But this is a wallet designed for onboarding new people into the ecosystem who want something simple and something with a nice user interface. So that's the market for this wallet. And now we know that the natural extension of that is we need to get mobile out there. This is at least my, my uh, perception is I want us to get mobile out there because I want there to be a very simple uh, mobile app that people could use for our ecosystem. Okay, and what else can I say about this is uh, the the bottom line for all of this and the, the final point about the commentary is we're not seeing a lot of real-world usage. And this goes back to the conversation that I had with you guys all a couple of weeks ago about our leading KPI being network usage. And we're not seeing a lot of it, to be frank. We have a cryptocurrency. We have a blockchain. You could do different things with that today. But not a lot of people are doing much with it. So I, I still haven't rank ordered uh, this statistic yet in terms of network usage and fees people are paying to actually use the network. But we're, we're not getting a lot. So we're getting something like $1,000 per, per quarter of transaction fees flowing into the network. And comparing that to something like an Ethereum with $75 million per quarter in transaction fees, you can see there's a huge discrepancy there. And we aim to close this gap quickly. Obviously, we're not going to... We don't expect to jump up to the $75 million magnitude anytime soon. But the initiative that Roth mentioned is an important one because we're taking this quite serious about what, what can we do today with our blockchain? What can we do today to make Zen more actively used a cryptocurrency? Um, so this is a big effort for us. Uh, clearly, the sidechain system, the SDK that we're, we're very close to releasing will be a big part of that. And, and in fact, I think the dominant part of getting real usage for our system but that's not to say that we shouldn't be doing things today. We shouldn't have been doing things two years ago to foster real usage uh, for the, the blockchain. So we're better late than never. We're you know, deep diving significantly right now. Rolf uh, issued a, basically a call to action or for, call for help to you, the community. Um, definitely get out there and you know, voice your opinion if you have ideas or if you can implement ideas even better. Uh, but this is something we take seriously. So all that summary, uh, I would say, Brookster, uh, you know, 777, thank you so much for your comments here on YouTube. This type of uh, feedback is extremely important for us. It doesn't always have to be feedback that we like to hear. I mean, I like to hear in the in the sense that it makes us feel good about ourselves. That's not the point of what we're doing here. The point is that we want to have a successful blockchain ecosystem over time. So if we're if we're not open, if we're acting like ostriches with our head in the sand and we're not getting feedback from the community especially those that have been with the project for the longest and take it the most seriously and the most passionate about what we're doing then we're failing uh we're not going to fail on that so we're, we're very open to this type of feedback very much appreciate it and to the extent that we can where it matters most we're going to be taking actions so i'll stop here guys and open it up to q a thank you rob i can't agree more this is how we grow and grow stronger so um, questions. The first question is, what are, what are elective privacy horizon offers? Uh, elective privacy? So uh, if, you, if you use a full node, uh, if you're on a wallet that has a full node, you can shield your transactions um, so that you can shield you know, who you're sending uh, some Zen to, and you can shield the amounts of Zen that's being sent. That's just uh, at the core of our technology that we've had from the beginning that we inherited from Zcash. And within that, you could actually embed a, a short message. So this is where the idea of a messaging protocol came from, was that you can include a message with these types of shielded transactions. Um, I'm not sure if that answers the question, but that's just part of the features that we've had so far. When it comes to the sidechain system, and this is still, you know, you, we'll, we'll, uh, more of this will become evident as we actually release the system. But we've built a, a nice new cryptographic library that we're going to be improving on significantly, Gingerlib. And if and you know, this is quite an extensive library that will be playing directly into how our sidechains operate and tools that will be available for application developers in our sidechains. And these tools will be geared towards extending uh, functionality of zero knowledge into other types of data structures um, so that we can do things where applications could actually preserve privacy of their users, content that users um, produce, content that they disseminate, 
and so forth. Even identity, I think, would be uh, an open game here for people that uh, may want to have some sort of uh, transaction record of doing things over time without revealing who they are or what they've done. Uh, I think there are so many applications here that are extremely valuable for actually getting blockchain services or getting uh, real economic activity onto blockchain. So hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Rob. The second question is, where will the game integrating Zen be released? I oh, think Jonathan can answer. Yeah, John, yeah, please, please, Jonathan. Hey, uh, so good question. Where will the games integrating Zen be released? So uh, to start as a test, we're working with a company that has games already available, already for download today on Android and on iPhone. So it's not integrated with Zen yet, but that's where we're going to start. So Android and iPhone app stores uh, for those 13 games. So that's the first part. The second part is working with game developers to actually host their games on the faucet. So this is months away. I'm just kind of giving you a preview. But what we'd really like to do is find game developers from all over the world, you know, students, amateurs, um, you know, indie game developers who want some exposure for their games and would be willing to um, host it on the faucet. And ideally, we'll have a leaderboard where people can compete on those games hosted by developers from our global community and could earn Zen for actually scoring high on the leaderboard. So... This this is like a Q2, Q3 kind of plan. We haven't started working on that yet. So in the short term, it'll just be the uh, 13 games on Android and iOS. So hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Jonathan. Last question. Are you working with other partners similar to FCAS or are you planning to? I think that's a question for Rowan. Exactly. Um, the short answer is yes. So there's a quite a large variety of um, organizations that have set themselves up to try and provide more sophisticated data. And they've kind of partitioned themselves in lots of different ways. So some of the companies are looking at specifically on-chain data. Some of them are looking at trying to provide a metric to kind of make it easier to understand the fundamental strength of a project. And I think those two areas are kind of where Flipside focus their time. They kind of try and provide a really broad fundamental analysis of a project. And then rather than kind of inundating the user with a whole bunch of data, they try and simplify that into what they call their FCAS rating. And obviously, a lot of the on-chain metrics fall into that in the background. But there are other companies that do slightly different things. One of the other companies that we have an ongoing relationship with is a company called Digital Assets Data. And they do um, a kind of self-serve portal where you have this kind of workbook where you can pull in different chain metrics or different inputs from exchanges or from wherever you really need to be pulling data. And their kind of unique feature is that they can be really bespoke in in targeting exactly what uh, data-driven mission you're trying to complete. So we've had a couple of ongoing missions with those guys. We looked at liquidity in a bit of detail to try and figure out what impact it was having. We also looked at faucet activity and, and a variety of other different projects. But those two are the, the primary data players that we have relationships with and that we appreciate working with at the moment. Thank you, Rowan. Uh, so these are the top three questions for today's Weekly Insider. Uh, we will post the rest of the questions and answers on the Weekly Insider chat channel here. And if you are listening on uh, listening this on YouTube, you can ask your questions in the comment section below. And uh, um, we have Rob uh, to add one more thing. Yeah, thanks. Uh, there was a, a few things that I wanted to add on to what were what's already coming out preliminary and some of the research and, and discussions that we're doing. Um, so, really, the the large opportunities are going to come from the sidechain applications, and those take time to develop. You know, so Jonathan's talking about integrating games with the faucet. Well, there's no reason that we can't have side chains that are game apps. Uh, and, and so one of the things that 
I learned in a different industry, uh, the semiconductor industry, where it takes about a year and a half for a new processor or uh, other type of thing to come to market. So all the people have to design these circuit boards and all the surrounding things before they have that processor. So they have to spend about a year and a half designing new products based around a processor that they don't have yet. They only have the specs. There's no reason we can't do the same type of thing, the parallel development. So as soon as the software development kit comes out, we can start doing parallel development of sidechain applications on the test net. And it'll take a little while for those sidechain applications to be developed, tested, and things like that. And then when the sidechain forward and backward uh, uh transfers are available on the main chain, we can just get those sidechain apps that have been parallel developed uh, up and running. So I'm not saying that um, you know, the Horizon development team is going to do all this stuff. I'm saying anybody can do this type of development. The other thing that I wanted to add on was uh, a comment that Rob made uh, a week or two ago, which was bridging the public to private blockchain gap. And this is a big one that comes up in our research because when we talk to a lot of folks, they're like, oh yeah, blockchain is going to be huge for supply chain. But you know what? None of these public blockchains are really doing much in the way of supply chain. Most of the supply chain work in businesses, enterprise, uh, and things like that are being developed on Hyperledger hyper Fabric and Hyperledger Sawtooth. And these are not blockchains. These are permission distributed ledgers, and they're controlled by the people that uh, are, are the ones that are developing it. So the idea would be that we could do something that's similar to a permission distributed ledger or uh, e even a blockchain on a side chain using the smart contracting applications. But we don't have to, again, go through all the uh, process of figuring out what it's worth because people can use Zen to get funds onto that side chain and figure out uh, you know what it's worth and what they're willing to pay for based upon what the developers are able to do. So these are just some of the things that are preliminarily coming up, but that's really what I see may be able to drive a lot of the excitement is the parallel development of the side chain applications uh, that are going to be then be able to slot it into the main chain or uh, running when they're fully developed and tested. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, stay tuned for our next weekly insider, which I know is going to be very, very ex exciting. And I hope to see you all very soon. Have a great day. Bye.